quasi-static compression of a gas. Consider a thermally insulated gas, ideal gas, of particles confined within a container of volume V. The gas is initially at some uh, absolute temperature T. Assume now that the volume of this container is very slowly reduced by moving a piston to a new position. Give qualitative answers to the following questions. What happens to the energy levels of each particle? So let's start with this. Okay, so we have a three-dimensional uh, box. Um, the energy levels, so for, what, for one particle, uh, we know that uh, particle in a box states have energies uh, epsilon r given by pi square h bar square divided by 2m and x square uh, so let's assume that this is a cube so let's make this a vol the volume uh, Let's make this L squared and Y squared over L squared plus and Z squared over L squared so that this will be a pi square H bar squared divided by 2M L squared and X squared plus and Y squared plus and Z squared. And remember, NI is an integer, positive integer, 1, 2, 3, etc. Uh, these are the energy levels assuming a cubic box let's say to simplify things the volume is equal to l cube so uh, what happens to the energy levels of each particle so you can see that l is v to the power one over three so uh, to answer the first question the volume uh, which is L cube uh, is reduced so it's slowly being reduced in this process so uh, we find that L square which is V to the power 2 over 3 will increase uh, so so it will decrease so the volume is reduced L square is reduced uh, will decrease and therefore uh, epsilon r which is proportional to uh, 1 over v to the 2 over 3 when v is reduced epsilon r increases so the energy levels will increase Okay, so what happens to the energy levels of each particle? The energy levels of uh, each particle increases, they go up. So this is my answer. And now to investigate things a little bit further, if I look at the spacing between the energy levels, delta E, uh, delta epsilon, that would be pi square h bar square over uh, 2ml square. Now I would have an x plus 1 uh, squared minus an x squared uh, plus an y plus 1 squared minus n y squared plus n z plus one squared minus n z squared that's the spacing between the energy levels you can see that delta epsilon is also proportional to one over v to the uh, two over three so delta epsilon also increases so therefore i find that the spacing between the energy levels also will increase the spacing between energy levels also increases. Part B. 
does the mean energy of a particle increase or decrease? Okay, so the mean energy of a particle is found by uh, definition sum over all possible uh, states with energies epsilon r and probability of occupancy pr. So I have to multiply all possible values of the energy with their corresponding probabilities of occupancy. Now, uh, if I have a change in the mean energy of the system, it will be sum over r epsilon r dpr, the probabilities can change, or sum over r pr d epsilon r, the energy levels can change. So I have found that when I change the volume of the system, the energy levels are changing. But on the other hand, this is a thermally insulated vessel. So uh, I find that this part should be uh, zero. And why is that? Uh, because in the quasi-static compression process, the mean energy change, dE bar, can be written as d bar q, small amount of heat added, small amount of work done. And that is equal to sum over r uh, epsilon r dpr plus sum over r pr d epsilon r. So this corresponds to uh, the constant energy levels changing uh, probability of occupancy and work done corresponds to change in the energy levels as we have explicitly seen uh, in this case. And we have a thermally insulated uh, vessel, thermally insulated. So that means we would have d bar q is equal to zero. Uh, so we see that while the uh, energy levels increase, the probability of occupancy of these levels, the probability of occupancy, PR, does not change. So the probability of occupancy is the same for each level. So uh, I see that the change in the mean energy of the system is sum over R, PR, constant probability of occupancy, but the energy levels are changing. And since I have found that the energy levels uh, are uh, increasing, the epsilon R is positive and PR is uh, constant, therefore I can conclude that DE bar is positive. So the mean energy uh, the mean energy of a particle increases. Uh, now let's move on to part C. Uh, is the work done on the gas in reducing its volume uh, positive or negative? Uh, so the work done on a gas in a quasi-static process, d bar w, we have shown to be equal to minus uh, p bar dv. And since we have a decrease in the volume, dv is negative, the work done on the gas is positive. So... Uh, the work done we are compressing the gas the work done on the gas is positive part D does the mean energy of a particle measured above its ground state energy increase or uh, decrease uh, now, uh, 
we can find the mean energy of a particle, uh, final value of the mean energy of a particle above its ground state, uh, E final bar minus uh, epsilon zero. This will be equal to sum over R, uh, epsilon R final minus epsilon zero times probability of occupancy of R. And we know that the final energy, mean energy, uh, and the energy levels EFR is greater than uh, initial energy levels that, so that's due to uh, part A so the initial energy level above the ground state was sum over R epsilon R I minus epsilon zero times the probability of occupancy so the mean energy of each particle above its ground state increases So this is, uh, it doesn't require much thought, but basically uh, that's how we can argue. And part E of the question, does the absolute temperature of the gas increase or decrease? The absolute temperature uh, is basically defined in beta, that is one over KT, is uh, the derivative of natural logarithm of number of accessible states with respect to energy. And we know that the number of accessible states at an energy E is uh, proportional to it, or it varies as the energy above the ground state energy uh, to the power number of degrees of freedom. So ln omega uh, is F times ln E minus E zero. So E zero is our ground state energy. So we find that 1 over kT or beta varies as F over E bar minus E0. So this has to be evaluated at E bar. So uh, therefore we see that the temperature varies as E bar minus E0 divided by F. So it's the mean energy above the ground state energy per degree of freedom. So that is our interpretation of temperature here. This is an important result. Therefore, if the mean energy of the system increases, uh, temperature increases also. Okay, so uh, we're talking about the quasi-static compression of a gas in a thermally insulated uh, container of volume V. The gas is at initial temperature T and we're very slowly reducing its volume by moving a piston. We can write the energy levels for each particle, uh, for particle in a box states. Assuming a cubic box, it is proportional to, the energy levels are proportional to 1 over V to the 2 thirds power. So if V decreases, energy levels will increase as, as, uh, as, as uh, also uh, the delta epsilon, the spacing between the energy levels will increase as I have shown here explicitly. The spacing between energy levels also increases. The mean energy of the system is sum over R, epsilon R, PR. So we have to multiply all energy, all possible energies with their probabilities. And uh, in differential form, this becomes epsilon R dPR plus PR d epsilon R. And we know that when we have thermal interaction, we are providing energy into the system to change the probability of occupancy of energy level. So the first term is uh, d bar q. The second term is d bar w, the work done on the gas. So we have uh, a change in the energy levels. d epsilon r is positive, but the probabilities are fixed. Therefore, the, there will be a mean energy of a, a, an increase in the mean energy of a particle. 
or per particle. And the work done on the gas is minus P bar dV. Since T dV is negative, P bar is our pressure here. So the work done on the gas should be positive. The mean energy above the ground state energy as well as the energy levels are increasing above the ground state energy. So the mean energy of each particle above its ground state energy will increase. And to find the connection between temperature and the, the change in the mean energy, we can use uh, the definition of absolute temperature, 1 over kT equals del ln omega del E. And also remembering that the number of accessible states will change with energy uh, E minus E0 to the power F. So F is number of degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom. F is equal to 3N for a three dimensional uh, gas. Uh, remember, because we have three quantum numbers for each particle and we have N particles. So we put a 3N degrees of freedom. E0 is a ground state energy. So this gives us temperature uh, varying as the mean energy above the ground state energy per degree of freedom. So since that is increasing, temperature will also be increasing.